during this hour, I'm hanging with Derek Shulman, one of the pioneers of prog rock giants, Gentle Giant, who formed the band, of course, with his brothers Ray and Phil back in 1970. Derek, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. Great to see you. You too. 1970, I mentioned. Now, are you doing the math on that? I hope so, because that was 35 years ago, and in celebration of this benchmark occasion, the band's classic albums are being released in deluxe anniversary editions. The first two to reach store shelves, their 1975 classic Freehand and 1973's In a Glass House, is being released in the U.S. for the very first time by DRT Entertainment. So Derek, it's great to have these re-releases back in the stores. I know that there's so many fans of Gentle Giant over the years that have been looking for key titles and missing titles and have stuff on vinyl and don't have it on CD. But there's one record, one that's out now, In a Glass House, that I recall working in a record store in the early 80s and everyone looking for this record and they could only get it on an import. And now for the first time ever, this record is finally being made available here in the US and a lot of people feel it's the band's best record. Why has it taken more than 30 years for this record to get a proper U.S. release? Well, primarily, the record was, uh, was recorded, and um, when, we, uh, well, when the record company, Columbia Records at the time, heard it, they deemed it too uncommercial to, to release here. So um, it wasn't released. It was the only record which wasn't released ultimately at all. Uh, the catalog, which um, were the capital years, in fact, which is uh, what the 35th year anniversary series are, uh, reverted back to the band um, over a period of the 25 years since we've been uh, um, apart, as it were. And uh, we figured um, a 35 year anniversary, including this album, would be nice for us and our fans who have been very loyal and, in fact, have grown over the years. And in fact, for our kids who can't even, couldn't, couldn't find the CDs in their stores and asked us, where are your records? So we, don't, we don't hear your music. So we figured that was the uh, reason why we are putting them out. I find it funny that you say because In a Glass House wasn't commercial enough because you guys being a progressive rock band, <laughs> Gentle Giant was never really a hit driven band. It wasn't right. about that. So w what was it particularly about that album? Because the fans love it so much and wanted it so badly, but what didn't the label see that the fans saw? I think, I think it was a period of time when, um, actually, my elder brother was in the group at, uh, on the album before. Um, he left. Uh, the album was a very hard album uh, musically to get into unless you were really into music, per se. And um, I just think that the uh, record, record company, was going, they were going through changes too. We weren't, you're right, we weren't a hit-driven uh, uh, band. We, we didn't look for hit singles. We, we didn't know what a hit single was. Right. We were very cocooned as a band. Commercial, uncommercial, we didn't know what that meant. And, and I guess at that time, the label thought or believed that they knew, did know, and they deemed us, as I said, uncommercial. I, 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 I throw my hands in the air. <laughs> I don't know. Where there's a great irony to this, which we're going to get into later on in the hour with Derek, because well, we'll tell you about it in a second. But I wanted to ask you about the memories that must have come back to you revisiting these records after all these years. I, I find that a lot of artists I talk to say that they, they make a record, they move forward, and they actually never go back and listen to them. They kind of just leave them for the fans. Had you been listening to the old stuff? Had, had you revisited the records, or did you really just get into it again when you did the reissues? Oh, absolutely. That's uh, exactly what happened. I mean, as far as I was concerned, and, and I think for the most part, the rest of the band was concerned, this period, which is a fantastic period for, a group, for the group, uh, was, a, was a chapter. It was, a, it was an immensely... Uh, gratifying chapter, uh, musically, etc. Um, but it was a chapter in our lives. Now, I hadn't, to tell you the truth, I really wasn't listening or hadn't listened to the music for a long time. Occasionally, uh, my kids, again, would find something on vinyl or, or, or an import DVD or, or CD, should I say. Um, but no, I didn't listen to the, to the music. What, what was interesting to me was when I remastered the, the, the CDs, I um, I was listening to them. I was listening to them with a kind of almost an objective point, uh, point of view as opposed to subjective. And I thought, hmm, this is pretty damn good. Hmm. Actually, not a bad band at all. I like that little, you know, contrapuntal part and that sort of, uh, you know, this, this fugal thing is pretty interesting, you know. I wouldn't sign them, <laughs> but they're pretty damn good. Derek Shulman of Gentle Giant is hanging with me throughout this hour. Right now, more classic music videos on VH1 Classic. Ozzy Osbourne is just one of the many artists who has professed his love for the music of the man who is hanging with me this hour, 
here on VH1 Classic, Derek Shulman of Gentle Giant. Derek, thanks for being here. My pleasure. It's been 35 years since Derek helped form Gentle Giant, and now the band is being remembered with a series of anniversary editions released by DRT Entertainment. The first two albums to get the treatment, 1973's In a Glass House and 1975's classic Freehand. They're both now in stores. Now, Derek, Gentle Giant obviously carved out this niche as pioneers of progressive rock, but the really interesting part about this is that the, the origins of the band and the roots and your influences really came from American R&B, which I think is really interesting. Talk about the groups that you were influenced by and how that ended up having you segue into what Gentle Giant ended up doing. That's an interesting question. Uh, well, in the mid-60s in England, uh, as you, as you and your audience probably know, uh, a lot of the groups that uh, happened were very R&B influenced, uh, and the only medium uh, that you could actually get some some interesting um, music from was from uh, American Forces Network, which is based in Europe. And we, used to, uh, me and my a couple of friends from school, used to listen and tune into this very weak signal from Europe, and we heard uh, oh, Joe Tex and and. Uh, the early Otis Redding music and we would listen to them and we didn't have tapes at the time, but we'd listen to them and, and strum along and see if we knew what these songs uh, were, etc. Uh, I started a group when I was at school with school buddies and what we did was kind of translate what we heard on these AFM, American Forces, sorry, a AFN network uh, stuff that we heard into the group which evolved into a group called Simon Dupree and the Big Sound. Um, we toured while I was at school um, and uh, recruited a couple of other members. And in fact, uh, we landed a record deal and uh, we're still, a very, we actually garnered a pretty good following in the uh, south coast of England and, and um, where we were from. Um, we, as I said, we had a record, we, we got a record deal at EMI. And after our third record, um, we had a big, big hit, uh, you know, top five hit single um, called Kites, which is still actually being played 40 years after it was released. Uh, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to age myself, but I am now. Um, uh, and, and that, and that in, in certain respects, as far as I was concerned, and, and my brothers who were in the band, uh, was uh, a very interesting turn, turning point because at that time, um, we were a very, very, well, well, very well respected a live group. We were, we were a rock and uh, R&B group. That hit single kind of turned us into a pop band and it was almost a millstone around our necks because we started to do a circuit of the pop bands of the era, that the Searchers, the Hollies, and all those kind of things. And it felt like we were being stymied in our musical progression, mm -hmm. which I guess led to mine and my brother's boredom with that group. And subsequently, the, uh, the um, idea of forming another group, which expanded our own per personal and musical horizons, and recruited members who can even push us to another level, mm. which is in effect uh, what happened at the end of Simon Dupree and the birth of uh, Gentle Giant. It was really a response against kind of getting caught into one sort of sound or direction because of the success you had initially on. It, it, it's strange it may, yeah. as it may sound, is exactly what happened. And, and now progressive rock, like even today, in a way, it's, it's really starting to come back again. You know, there's new bands out there like Mars Volta, and for years Dream Theater have been considered one of the great progressive rock bands now. Mm -hmm. Back then, you guys were really one of the pioneers of the genre. Groups like Yes and Genesis opened for Gentle Giant. Did you realize at the time that you were part of what was really becoming a new movement in music? To be honest with you, the, the, the term progressive rock, as far as the group is concerned, is almost, it, it doesn't feel like, uh, I, I don't think we, we felt very comfortable, and still even now feel comfortable in being bagged in that kind of genre, if you like. It was. The, what we were was uh, basically um, a cocoon. Um, we were, I, myself and my brothers recruited a couple of members, one the keyboard player, who was uh, one of the major um, composers in the band from the Royal Academy of Music. He, he had a degree in composition. Um, the, the guitarist was an out-and-out -out blues player. Uh, I mean, a heavy sort of uh, loved the you know, deepest blues and hardest blues there, were, there was. And um, the drummer was a solid one for the bar. Drummer. Um, so what we did, and, and my background was uh, as an as R&B soul singer, my brother, Ray, um, was also classically trained on the violin. 
my father was a professional musician, so we came from that sort of background anyway. It was, yeah. Music was always around. But the point I was making it here is that we, we kind of cocooned ourselves and pushed our own limits internally when we rehearsed. We had a year off uh, while, while I broke the, f the first group up, Simon Dupree and the Big Sound, and, and started this new group, which was to be Gentle Giant, and really kind of played off each other. We didn't know what we were doing or what bag it was or who we sounded like or what movement we were part of. Mm -hmm. But that's really where we were, and, and really we, we weren't sort of looking to see what the movement was about. We were just being ourselves, right. and we continue to be, for the most part, all through the, uh, the life of the band. Right. It's very dynamic, very interesting music that one of the reasons why I think it still holds up so well today is because you did it on your own terms, and it's really great to revisit these records now that they're coming out. Still more to come as I continue to hang with Derek Shulman of Gentle Giant during this hour of VH1 Classic. Coming up now, more classic music videos. Derek, it's been great hanging with you this hour. Thanks so much for coming by VH1 Classic. My pleasure. I know I speak for all the rock fans out there. Very excited to have all the Gentle Giant records finally coming back into stores. They sound great. Thank you. 35 years. Yes, it was in 1970 that brothers Derek Gray and Phil Shulman formed Gentle Giant, one of the bands at the center of that decade's prog rock movement. Well, throughout the year, the band's classic albums are being released in deluxe editions. In stores right now, 1973's In a Glass House and 1975's Freehand. So Derek, I have to ask you one more thing about Gentle Giant, because listening to these records and how unbelievable they're arranged and recorded and the different sounds and the dynamics in them, what was it like being in the studio? Because in today's technology, it would be a heck of a lot easier to record all these different things back then using, you know, analog tape and stuff. What was it like for you as a musician and, and how, how hard was it to put these records together originally? Was there a lot of studio time? Um, in actuality, we didn't use a lot of studio time. There was a lot of rehearsal prior to making the record. Uh, and some of the music, obviously most of the music was worked out before we went in, for the most part, except one album, and I'll just tell you this. Um, there's an album called Acquiring the Taste, where we went in without anything being written. And in fact, we, all we put down was a click track, just a metronome track, and we built on top of that. Wow. That, I, I don't advise any musician <laughs> to do that at all, because you know sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and that, that's what happened with that record. Um, but for, for the most part, uh, no, we didn't use that much time. What we did do, is um, we had a lot of rehearsals, but Kerry and Ray, and even myself, as the composers, we scored some of the stuff, actually physically scored on, uh, on music, and we actually sort of wrote and, 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 and recorded by, by reading the music. Wow. As, because, so it wasn't ad lib per se. Right. It, it, this, this wasn't sort of, uh, let's jam away and see what we've got. Right. This is very precise, and, and, and that's why, you know, it wasn't, uh, that's why you hear the precision in, in that respect, because it was worked out. It's, a, it's very interesting stuff to listen to. Now, when Gentle Giant ended in 1980, what many of you guys may not realize is that Derek still continued with a huge role in the music industry on the other side of the desk, so to speak, in the record label world. Derek is the guy who signed bands like Bon Jovi and Tears for Fears and Men Without Hats, to name a very few. All very unique bands as well at the time, bands that definitely had unique sounds and really didn't sound like anyone else that had you know, tremendous success. How, how did you find it going from artist to the guy on the other side and now going back to once again in 2005 doing this and being the artist again? Uh, to say uh, schizophrenic is bizarre. I mean, it's, 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 it's less than the, the truth. Um, uh, it, was, it was interesting for me, uh, jumping to the enemy, if you like, the, the record company <laughs> side. Uh, the, the, the fact is, what is it? Is it, this was the uh, is it, uh, all I knew. Uh, and to continue as a musician would have been moot as far as I was concerned. I'd done that already. The chapter was closed as far as I was concerned. So moving to this side, I had a friend who actually worked at Polygram which was just being formed at the time. Um, and he said, why don't you think about coming to work at a record company uh, after the band broke up? And I thought, well, uh, you know, it's either that or, or digging, digging the ditches. And, and uh, my back was a little sore at the time, so I figured uh, <laughs> you know, doing this was uh, probably a better idea. Um, it, it, was, it, was, it was good and it still is good because what, the one thing that I think I bring and have brought to at least myself and the people I've dealt with in the, uh, as far as artists are concerned, is that I've, I've been there, I've made records, I've been on the road for many years, and, and, and therefore I can relate to what they do and what they've done. Um, 
at the same time, I know that you know uh, the music, the music business, and this is something I did learn immediately. Probably the first day I joined the enemy, as it were, is not really the music business. It's the business of music. Right. That was a scary thing for me to understand and to know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I had to learn it and try, and what I'm trying to do in my own quiet way, in, in the way that I, all I know is, is trying to reverse that a little bit mm. and make it the music business and about the artists. Because that's, if you didn't have the artists and music, it, it wouldn't be a business. And currently, Derek has his own record label, DRT Entertainment, who are reissuing the Gentle Giant Records as well as some other great bands as well. Final question for you now, as we're talking about you go from musician to label guy, and now, have you ever had the idea with the great response these reissues are getting to say, let it come full circle all the way and do the Gentle Giant reunion? Well, uh, have I had the idea? No. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 uh, no, I, I'll say no, but many other people have had that idea, and I've had many, many emails and, and calls and, and from bands as well, from, from bands who are still playing and from, from, are still playing from that era, and they're continuing to do so. Um, we, we just did an in-store in uh, Manhattan, Midtown Manhattan, and there was hundreds and hundreds of people, people there. I was more than surprised at the, uh, the, the turnout. And for the most part, most of the uh, fans, both young and older, I mean, the young part was interesting to me, had asked me and Kerry, who was over at the time, the keyboard player, uh, we just, why didn't you just reform, just for a tour, just one show? Um, the best, for me, the, the, the best thing for them, the fans at least they saw is way back, is to keep that in their memories because that was then, that was a, an era, that was a chapter in that era. Um, 25 years have passed since the last show. So that memory should be as fresh as it, in your head as it, as it was. If we, can, if we did it now, we're different people. We're, we've all moved on to different things. So I don't think it would be beneficial to them, even though they think it would be, or us. However, I've learned in my life to, to never say never. <laughs> so I'll leave that little crack little open there. A little door open for the fans out there about <laughs> but, a gentle but, giant. But don't look for it just yet. Just a little door, a little crack in the... A little tiny crack, but, okay. but boy, that's, that's a tiny crack. Well, that's enough to keep some of us hanging All on. Right, so, okay. Derek, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. Great to meet you and pick up the gentle giant reissues as they come out throughout the year. And now more classic music videos on VH1 Classic. Mm -hmm.